Well, car advice website Ask Patty says more than half of the world's women are unhappy with the car products on offer. And in the U.S., women influence 80% of car buying decisions. American women have also overtaken men with the number of driver's licenses. But despite having so much influence on the auto industry, that's not reflected in the workforce. The most recent government data shows the majority of women in car manufacturing, 56%, hold clerical positions. When it comes to leadership roles, that share drops to the teens. Just 16% of top executive positions are held by women. Well, for a deeper look at how the U.S. auto industry is attracting women, I spoke with Lisa Copeland. She's managing partner of Fiat Alfa Romeo in Austin, Texas. I started by asking her how the car industry has evolved to include women. Right. Um, you know, I started when I was really young, but back then it was in the 80s. And so there really women were not in the auto industry. So I was kind of an anomaly. So it was tough, and I, I think I was so young back then, I didn't realize how tough it really was. And coming up through the ranks, it's been, you know, it, there's a lot of sacrifice, and that's the number one thing that I tell women. What a great industry and what great opportunity and glass ceilings. But there's a lot of sacrifice because at the end of the day, we're, we're in the retail business, so we're open on weekends and we're open holidays. And so that's why I think a lot of women choose not to uh, enter the automotive industry is because of the sacrifice and because of commitments of raising families and being caretakers. And it's too bad. I, it's, it makes me really sad. And in terms of opportunities for women when it comes to having that flexibility, what would you like to see more? Well, I'd like to see, you know, I, I work on the retail side, but even on the manufacturing side, you know, women have so many roles in life, right? And we, we're, women, we're moms and we're wives and we're caretakers. and. Um, and then on top of the fact, you know, we're out trying to shatter uh, glass ceilings. And so we have so much more on our plate, I believe, than what men do, but we're held to the same uh, accountability. And so, you know, I would like to see where there would be more flexibility, more job sharing, uh, more opportunities for great women to enter this industry, you know, more flex time and things like that. And I just don't think the industry's gotten there yet. Uh, on the manufacturing side, with our OEMs, I think that there is a little more flexibility. I know uh, I, I'm with FCA, and I know they've got a great program with STEM and for women, and I know General Motors does a really good job, you know, bringing on Mary Barra. I know she's got a real heart for women uh, and women in the industry. So I think it's moving in the right direction, but I think we have a really long way to go. And Lisa, in terms of those avenues for actually getting into the industry, where do you see the most opportunities? Well, depending on what it is you do, you know, on the on the manufacturing side, I think STEM has really come a long way and they're really promoting it. And so I, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for women to get into engineering, technology and design. You know, women uh, influence 85 percent of all car purchases. So it's such a natural place for women to get into the engineering and the design and even the technology side of the automotive industry. I mean, think about it. If women uh, dictate 85 or influence 85% of the buying decisions, shouldn't they be designing the cars and coming up with the technology? So there's, there's a real opportunity there uh, from that side of the house. And on my side, on the retail side, you know, I think the sky's the limit. You know, there, there's not a certain education level. There's not anything. You know, it is, it's a passion and it's, it's, it's loving people. And the sky's the limit. I, I know I look at myself. I mean, I went to school for fashion and I started out as a car salesperson and now I'm a dealer principal in the largest dealership in the country. And nothing special. I just worked hard and I stuck with it and never gave up. But I'll tell you this, I made a lot of sacrifices and I don't know that every woman wants to make those sacrifices. And you mentioned the, the, the power women actually have when it comes to car buying. And I'm wondering, why do you think then automakers are still more so focused on, on the buying aspect and not actually having these women as employees in their companies? You know, um, you would think they would. And I think in fairness to the industry, they, they've really, especially in the last five years, what I've really seen is from the retail side to the OEM side, that they really are concentrating, going into the colleges, working with the STEM programs, really really doing a lot of, um, of uh, recruiting out of, you know, out of different areas, real estate. I can tell you I'm very intentional to hire women. I look for women on the sales team. I look for women managers. But I think you have to be intentional in your hiring practices because women don't just fall off trees in the automotive industry. 
So I would like to encourage my dealer colleagues around the country to be intentional when it comes to hiring for women in the automotive industry.